Hello everyone, Dr. Blue here. Welcome to the 5k Q&A. Thank you everyone for the, well, activity, I guess, on the last video for asking me questions. I got a lot, and I mean a lot of questions. The last time I did one of these was at 500 subs, and I had to make the post like three or four times to get enough questions for the video. And now just even making one video about it, I've got more than I can even handle. I had to actually take some off because I couldn't answer all of them because it would be too long. Uh, I think I'll do it like the last one where I go through a couple of like, you know, really thought out questions and then like at the end, you know, loads of quick fire questions that I got that can answer really quickly. So, without further ado, on to the first question. The uh, first question asks, how do you keep yourself motivated to record and edit videos? I really liked this question, to be fair, because it was like a, a joke of like, not a joke, because it was like an inside baseball kind of thing, you know? This was a really interesting question for me, um, and I got an interesting answer. It's kind of, it's a daily struggle, really. I really struggle to stay motivated and record and edit sometimes. Like, you know, sometimes I'm just not in the mood, or like, sometimes I'm just having like a really bad day or you know a sad boy hours tm night and i just can't force myself to do stuff so honestly um a little trick isaac taught me actually really helps so like what i'll do is in the, in the morning for instance if i'm about to go to work and i'm up early enough which is usually not very often but if i am up early enough or if i'm like you know having to go somewhere really quick i'm like i'll just edit for 10 minutes you know just 10 minutes i've got a bit of spare time i have to go soon i'll edit for 10 minutes and just do it and usually i can get a a lot done in that 10 minutes you know if you just sit down and edit for a little bit of time tell yourself just do 10 minutes of editing at least then today you've done some editing you've made some progress and usually once you're in the swing of it like you're fine it's like going to the gym like half the battle is just getting there like having the motivation to get there and go there and if you just think fuck it i'll just do it for a little bit you end up you know at the gym you know, i was like oh i'll just do a little exercise but like, i got there and i did a full set and i did really good exercise today i'm really tired but yeah that's what it's like for YouTube, Isaac taught me that little trick, um, to be honest, but it, you know, even then it doesn't always work. It's easier if I'm really excited about the clip, if I've got a clip that I'm really looking forward to editing, or if I'm just like really kind of lately in the mood for it. Like I think now I'm finally getting back on the content creation wagon after like two weeks of doing fucking nothing. So I don't know, it's a daily struggle to be honest, um, but that 10 minute trick like really helps. And on those kind of lines, someone else asked, uh, what motivated you to start making videos? Um, what motivated me is that a lot of people in my high school wanted to do YouTube, but a lot of people really didn't. Everyone like always talked about it. YouTube was like one of the favorite things in my school to talk about. People were always watching some YouTubers video and I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna be that YouTuber. I wanna learn to do it. I wanna just make a start and actually do it for once, you know? And plus like, I was finding myself with a lot of free time. Like I was 18 or 17, I think at the time. I was 17 and I was playing a lot of games and I was really enjoying them doing achievement hunting and stuff but like that. But as I started to get, you know, towards 17, 17, 18, I was like, I want to start like, I want to have like a hobby or something long term that I can, you know, put my energy towards because at the moment I'm not really doing a lot in my spare time. So when I'm doing games, like what am I doing? I'm just playing them, I'm having fun, but I spend a lot of time doing them and it feels unproductive. I like to be productive. I'm a productive person. So what I started to do is I started to record them so like I could at least, you know, watch the videos back myself and see like what I did. Um, and then I started to like kind of present them as if I was talking to someone. And then I just started to like do, you know, YouTube videos. I was like, you know what, I'll just do this YouTube thing a go, you know, I'll, I'll take a shot at that. What motivated me, to be fair, was like, originally I started out doing blue reviews. I kind of had a passion to make the game industry better. Honestly, at this point, I think it's a bit of a lost cause, but like, I wanted to make the game industry better. Like, Angry Joe's reviews and rants motivated me a lot because he and I share a lot of the same views on video games in terms of like microtransactions and stuff like that and how they have potentially brought forth the grind that is today's gaming. So yeah, motivated me to start making YouTube videos. Um, um, no one was doing it and everyone was talking about it and I wanted to do something else other than just play games I wanted to be able to like look back on the times I had gaming and that just started into YouTube I guess on to the next question someone asked about the creation of my brand my name my character etc I'm glad someone asked this well I kind of knew someone was asked this because I get asked this all the time how did the Dr. Blue name come about and like, it happens all the time so I'm glad I can answer it here so I can finally point people to this video and say go watch this name I guess I'll go with first First is Dr. Blue and it used to be 99 um, and it was doctor because I wanted to be a doctor in my chosen field at uni I was gonna be like a 
criminologist, doctor, behavioral scientist kind of thing. And then I started doing uni. I started doing criminology and it was a lot more history than I expected. And I fucking sucked at history. So I kept flunking on the grades really fucking hard. So then I was like, no, I don't wanna do that. And I switched to IT instead. And the IT people were like, you can stay for four years or you can do three. I didn't know there was four um, at the time. I thought it was six. So I'm not, I'm not doing six. I'll just do my three and go, but I could have done four. So yeah, I was originally gonna be a doctor. That's why, but I'm not anymore. <laughs> the blue um, was originally B-L-U-E, not B-L the blow. It was the name of my dog, which was, you know, blue. Uh, she was like 16 years old and she died. Bored Collie, lovely fucking dog. Um, and blue is my favorite color. Or it was, I guess. I, th I think I'm leaning towards pink or purple now. I really kind of like it, pink or purple. And the 99, which has kind of since gone, um, was the favorite number of mine. It was my favorite number and my favorite ice cream. It was just a simple 99p flake cone, you know, just a little vanilla ice cream with a chocolate stick in it, you know, it's my favorite. It was so simple and so elegant and just tasty. The character, I kind of liked the eyeball thing um, of all, you know, kind of a massive eyeball because it kind of, you know, it's all seeing, it sees everything. A lot of kind of what inspired that is like Hamaeus Mora out of Skyrim. Like I loved Skyrim, I played it so much, I played it through like seven times and to the point now where I go through the beginning of the game again and I fucking get so bored finding that golden claw for the 11th time. But yeah, like I loved the whole like Dragonborn DLC, the Hamaeus Mora thing, you know, the keeper of all secrets, you know, seeing everything, stuff like that. And then I was playing Battle Block Theatre with my good friend Epix. Those of you who are really old on the channel will remember him. Epix was my first friend on YouTube and we played through Battle Block Theatre together, even though by the end we almost ended up hating each other because it was so frustrating. But in that you can like get loads of heads and stuff and I had a little eyeball guy on mine because I thought it was really cool. And then eventually when we beat the game you could get this big trophy that you carry on your back and I was like, you know what, I want to make a brand character out of this. Like he'll be great for like character stills because I was really into commentary videos back then I really wanted to use character stills for commentary videos and I was like I'll just get rid of the trophy and I'll put like a huge needle on his back as well I didn't get him commissioned till much later but like you know he's kind of a blue eyeball man with a stethoscope and a big needle on his back although those aren't always depicted these days but yeah I pretty much through battle block theater and a lot of inspiration from Skyrim and kind of just the all-seeing Hameas Mora like he's one of my favorite gods like I love that DLC like going into all the um, black books and getting the special powers like that was one of my favorite parts of that game uh, so Someone asked me how did I get through secondary school and I thought this was not really relevant to me as a YouTuber but I wanted to answer it anyway because I think it's a really interesting question. I was kind of bullied quite a lot in high school, well not quite a lot, I was, I was bullied a lot in primary school and then a little bit in high school and how did I get through it honestly like you just try and learn to shake it off. You know you deal with your fair amount of assholes in high school but it kind of like everything that got me through was I just wanted to focus on my grades and I didn't focus on the people who bullied me, it wasn't my job to focus on them, it was their job to focus on them. So while they were focusing on trying to bully me, they weren't focusing on themselves. And coincidentally, you know, a lot of my bullies are working really shitty jobs. Like one of them, I think, works in McDonald's. I actually saw him there when I was struggling to get a job. But like, he's he's still there, I think, and I'm in a computer job now. And it all comes back around. Like, karma kind of does it for me. Like, I didn't have to hold grudges. I knew that everyone would kind of get what's coming to them. Like, it sounds like bullshit, but like, honestly, like, it seriously does catch up with people. Like, your actions have consequences. Like, the energy you put out the world is what you get back. So I, I usually just, I focused on myself, I focused on my education, and I focused on what made me happy through high school as well. Whether that was video games, my education, or, you know, girls. <laughs> you know, I just focused on the stuff that made me happy. I didn't focus on the negative stuff. You know, that sometimes happened. And I thought, oh, this sucks, but hey, it is what it is. I'll get through it. So that's kind of how I got through it, you know, taking the good stuff where I can find it, really. Someone else asked, am I really a doctor? Um, I guess maybe should this should have gone into quick fire things, but no, because um, I already explained it through the uni thing. I was going to be a doctor and I'm not, um, so that's why. But no, I'm not really a doctor. I wanted to be. Could I still go back to uni and become one? I guess so. Do I really want to? Not anymore. Because like back then I was really obsessed with like, I really wanted a title. A doctor or sir or lord or something like that. Like I wanted to do something to get myself that title, you know, whether it's own some land for the lord or, you know, be knighted for the sir or have a doctorate to be a doctor and stuff like that and as I got older that became so much less important like why do I need something in my name to prove what I am like I don't care it doesn't bother me you know it was not really for me at the end like for the doctor to be in my name it wasn't really something that I wanted it was something that I thought other people would think looks cool and then as I got older I realized I really don't care what other people think so I don't need it so I didn't do it I also couldn't be asked <laughs> favorite video game growing up I love this one because 
I get to talk about Mass Effect. I love Mass Effect. Mass Effect 2 was my favorite video game growing up. Honestly, for those of you who haven't played Mass Effect 2, like there's a whole Mass Effect Legendary Edition out now where you can play through Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3. Like they've remastered all of them and Mass Effect 2 is honestly like the best one. Man, growing up, like I feel like Mass Effect 2 kind of spoiled the games for me or like ruined the games for me because Mass Effect 2 set the bar and like everything else today is like really bad compared to it. Games could be so good and like today's kids will never know it and that's kind of sad. I mean they remastered everything so people can go and experience it but like nothing will ever be as good as Mass Effect 2. Like there are very few games that are as good as Mass Effect 2 and most of them are older. Days Gone is a close contender. That's a really good game but it falls in some places. But yeah no Mass Effect 2. Um, I loved all the squad mates. I loved the character development. I loved just the universe all the codex and stuff. I read through the entire codex. It got to the point where I knew so much about Mass Effect that I had this little app called Quiz Up and I would like beat everybody on that. It's like you answer the questions about Mass Effect and you answer them as quick as you can. And I was just thrashing everybody and then they added in lore about Andromeda and I'm like oh fuck because I don't care about Andromeda. Andromeda sucks. Then I kind of sucked after that. <laughs> Mass Effect 2. Awesome fucking game. I really recommend you play it. The question I get a lot is this next one. When is the face reveal? And now I will put a little timer thing if you want to skip ahead here. I know this is the question that a lot of people are looking for the answer for, but it gets a little bit dark. So for those who don't really want to go through that, I'll leave like a little timer down on the bottom right now that you can skip to because it does get a little dark. So a little warning there. So the face reveal is, you know, when is it? I don't know. Face reveal for me, like a lot of YouTubers do it at certain sub counts and stuff and not me. Like, I don't want to be like H2 Delirious where he just never shows his face because I do want to eventually show my face. I feel like I could unlock like a lot of content that I could do and it would be really fun. For me, it's I want to be happy with myself because me as a person, like I'm not happy with myself. I don't have very good self-esteem. I have body dysmorphia disorder. The two of those combined is just a huge wombo combo that leads to a lot of dark nights. Not Batman, but like mental health stuff. It can be pretty depressing sometimes um, because I'm not happy with the way I look. I think I'm ugly. I think I'm overweight. I mean, you can just look at the Preston video to see how pregnant I look. The good thing is about that is that that video has kind of motivated me to lose the weight now because um, I didn't used to be like, I'm not hugely overweight, but obviously I look bad in that video and I want to get rid of that. You know, I used to not have it and I really want to get that back. So I'm working on that. The face reveal is whenever I'm happy with myself because I feel like if I'm not happy with myself and I have self-doubt all the time and then I put it on the internet and people go ew what the fuck like you should have stayed behind the face of you you shouldn't have face of you you're ugly and stuff like that like if that happened online and I know not a lot of people are like that but some people are like I feel like if that happened like it might really hurt me more than I should let it and it might lead to like more dark nights as well again not Batman just mental health stuff so yeah I want to do the face of you someday but for when I'm happy with myself I was gonna do it at Preston but then I had like a kind of really bad night out because I was doing really well up till Preston and then I had Preston and I had one bad night out and it just knocked my confidence so much. The next night, honestly, one of the nights in Preston was legendary. It was so fun, but just the night before was so shit and it just like made me realize that even though I had a really good night that last night in Preston, like I just, I'm not ready for it because if one setback can knock me back that far, then I'm just not ready and I should stay a little longer. So when is the face reveal? I don't know. Whenever I'm fully happy with myself, I guess. I know some of you do know what I look like, whether you're nosy, <laughs> winkies or whether you know i've told you because i trust you i trust that you'll keep that a secret and just let me face a veal in my own time when i'm ready uh how did i meet my friends this is one i get a lot as well um so there's this i don't know if you I mean a lot of you small content creators might know but there's this fucking awful site called youtube talk or yt talk or whatever and it's a great place for like small creators to meet but it's like it's a great place it's also the worst place and it's also the only place to meet other creators but i don't know about other collaboration forums online I guess big creators really don't need them because they just re reach out to each other but like it's this big forum where small creators can reach out to each other and I used to check up on it every so often and I was with my last group when we were going through some pretty tough stuff as a group and I checked it out I saw this post and I was like oh that actually kind of looks like a decent group they all make decent content and it could be fun so uh, I contacted Dan I joined his server by accident and then I joined the Winky server uh, they gave me a chance and I guess I impressed them because they kept inviting me to sessions and 
and then eventually made me a winky in April of 2020. So yeah, I met them through that. I met Dan through the post and originally I talked to Kyle first. Like I joined their New Year's Eve party. Dan and Kyle were there. Dan had to go early and I just ended up talking with Kyle for like ages and me and Kyle had a pretty good bonding session. And then I played with Dan and Kyle and that was really fun. And then eventually Wadism came in and we had a lot of fun as well. And then Isaac joined the group much later, but that's how I joined the group. That's how I met everybody. I think Benji contacted Dan as well and then I met Benji and stuff. So like that's how we all met essentially. If someone asked where would I be if I didn't meet the Winkies? I like this question because like it makes me think like what could have happened, you know? Like where would I be? And like honestly, I wasn't uploading to TikTok before I met the Winkies and I really should have been because maybe like even on my own I could have been much higher than I am right now. But like I was grinding out like 100, 200 subs a year at a time. Like it was grim. Like 30 subs for me was a good month and now 30 subs for me is a good day, you know? Yeah, I'd probably still be grinding it out around 200 subs at a time. I'd probably just about be reaching a thousand by now. I'd probably get to a thousand and then people would unsub and I'd go under and then people would resub and go back over and stuff like that. I'd probably just be hitting a thousand right now. I might not have a group because I was kind of on the brink of leaving my last one and I did and I really didn't see any of the creators out there so I probably wouldn't be in a group. I'd probably solo 900 subs, maybe a thousand, grinding out like reviews and solo gameplay stuff. I certainly wouldn't be as big as I am today. I mean I'm not even big by any means but you know it's a lot it's a lot compared to what I used to have. Um, someone asked this question which I thought was really cool. If I reach 10k will I try and do YouTube full time? Interesting question because like a lot of the guys are trying to go full time. Probably not um, because I feel like YouTube can be very like up and down and you really don't make a lot of 10k and as much as I would love to be able to devote more time to YouTube the revenue at the moment isn't there for me to be steady with that income. At the moment I get a lot of bills. Fucking council tax annihilates me. Rent annihilates me. Like I, I live alone. You know I don't live with my parents anymore. So I have to like pay rent. I pay council tax. I pay food. Water electric. Like I pay a lot of bills. So unless YouTube can spot me like two grand a month then not really. No. I would love to be able to devote more time to YouTube and just making more money off of YouTube means that I can do that. I can spend more time doing what I love. But at the same time I really love my job. Like I'm really good at my job. I really enjoy it. I love testing. So no, I probably won't try and do YouTube full time because I got bills to pay. Uh, someone asked this question, which I thought was a bit weird. Um, am I angry in the rage videos or is it like a script or a setup or something? I don't rage in the videos because I'm calm. Like I do rage in the videos because, you know, I do get angry, but like the rants, of course, you know, just come to me and obviously are a slight exaggeration of stuff. Like it's not scripted. I don't set it up. We don't think, okay, guys, I'm going to like get angry today and I'm going to make this specific rant. Like, I don't plan the rants in advance. They just come to me. Honestly, they do. So no, it's not scripted. It's not a setup, but like, you know, I get angry and I do I like, you know, then go on a, a rant that kind of comes to me in the moment. Yeah, sure. Would I say that rant maybe on my own if I was just gaming alone at the time? Probably not. So in that way, it's a slight exaggeration, but it's not like scripted or set up or anything. Uh, that was the most of the big questions. Um, I'll go through the quick fire questions now. I realize we're kind of like on quite a bit of time now. Um, I didn't realize it would be this long, but I'll try and go through these quick fire questions now. Uh, someone said, who do you play with the most? Uh, I think statistically, what is them? Uh, someone said, how long you've been making videos? I've been making videos of six years now, actually, shit. <laughs> uh, someone said, do you promise you won't stop making content? Uh, I've been making content for six years. I do it because I love it. Even if I have streams with zero viewers, which I have had before, I'll still make content. Like you can go to some of my older streams and see that I streamed with like one viewer the entire time who said nothing and I still did a full two hour stream. So so I probably won't stop making content, even if no one's watching. It's what I love to do. Someone said, what do you work as IRL? Uh, I work as a test analyst. I'm currently testing just computer software, but I'd prefer to be testing video game software. But hopefully if I get enough experience, I can move on and do that. Someone said, what's the weirdest hot mic you had during Warzone? Uh, there's one I haven't edited yet. I've got this guy like kind of speaking a different language at me, but it sounds like he's trying to summon the dead. I'll play the clip, I guess, really quick and edited. Literally, we've just been sitting in this building and everyone's been pushing oh, to us. And there's two, more. Two, two, two How things, is there more people things. pushing to us? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Leo. It's not like he was doing some sort of fucking chant. Trying to summon the dead. <laughs> Someone said, what did you ever think about playing single player games on the channel? Go into my playlist section of my channel. 
you'll find a nice surprise. Like, I used to do solo playthroughs all the time. I have, like, a couple of huge playthroughs that are, like, 60 videos long. If you want to binge Dr. Blue's single-player games, like, I've got loads of them. I recently even streamed The Beast Within, you know, or The Evil Within. Not Evil Within. Beast Within, Beast Inside, something like that. I did, like, a whole horror game stream on that, and people loved it. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, someone asked, what's my favourite winky quote slash moment? Uh, some of my favourite quotes are when Dan says, I'm going to sit here and wait for these kids to come over. Oh, I sound like a predator. <laughs> that one's really good. Uh, from Kyle, it's probably, who's that? Who's that? A giant baby. <laughs> That one really made me laugh. From Isaac, it's probably the clip where he has tears forming. The fact that Isaac actually cried at Warzone is really funny to me. Uh, from Wad, it's probably when he said that um, he was having a good night 15 minutes ago and we literally ruined his night with anime. Favourite drink? Um, Copperberg or a dark fruit cider? Uh, where am I from? I'm from Birmingham, but I didn't grow up there. Uh, what's my stream name and platform? Um, my stream name is Dr. Blue and my platform is YouTube. <laughs> they said they searched on Twitch and couldn't find anything. I don't stream on Twitch. They've got a lot of weird policies. They behave in a very inconsistent manner. It's just really weird how the Twitch staff behaves. And I don't really feel like I'd be safe on Twitch without getting my channel terminated or something like that. Uh, someone said, what's a video that I made popular? I think Isaac's, you know, this is our friend Blue. Those compilations. Um, or his petty insults clip. Because that was just, he just, you know said i hope you die or something i was like i hope you have a terrible night's sleep and stuff like that you know like, we just started going on with that and it got like three mil views for him and it was just me the first time i think it was me him and what the second time i don't know about the third time i think he did three of them that's a, a clip i made popular i guess the face tusky clip as well the question i get all the time is can you play with viewers can you do wars and custom stuff like that yes yes we can uh, this saturday the 21st we are actually doing a big Warzone custom session with viewers if you want to join it join the discord we always announce it there we always get this question and we always say yes we do it join the discord they never believe us and then we do a wars and customs we tell people about it and they never come so 21st of august this saturday we are doing a wars and customs join the discord that's where we'll put the invites that's where we'll coordinate everything join the discord uh, someone asked me how many hours do i have on warzone uh, i actually looked this up the other day um because i didn't realize um i'm not sure if it counts resurgence as well um because i just checked the verdansk ones i don't know how to check the resurgence ones or the rebirth ones but it says about three days and 18 hours so i guess about that long maybe that's how long i've spent on verdansk maybe i've spent a lot longer on rebirth i don't know someone said where do the meme ideas come from usually it's just that humor like uh, there's a lot of like pop culture Culture stuff not pop culture i guess but just meme culture stuff that i've seen growing up that a lot of the guys don't remember so i bring that up every so often like the carl weezer oh <laughs> you know like i saw that ages ago it was a really old meme of the noise i just really find funny uh so i bring that up all the time a lot of it's just us man like it's our humor it's the experiences we've had we just we have good chemistry together as a group so where do meme ideas come from usually us on the spot someone asked what my editing software is a lot of you probably expect me to say sony vegas um but it's not no it's camtasia studio 9 which people are probably like what is that um it's a really expensive software that i probably paid too much for that i learned in initially because a friend recommended it to me in uni it's an awful software it's crap it's terrible but it's the only one i know and it's also really user friendly which is what i like and so now i have a hard time learning anything else trust me i've tried to learn sony vegas i can't it's just it doesn't look right to me so i'm stuck on cantasia studio 9 and someone said would i give up warzone for another game probably yes because i don't really like cod that much like i really love the zombies warzone is air eh, i could take it or leave it but yeah absolutely i would i'm not glued to warzone I'm not glued to COD. I did not expect to blow up on COD. I would because I enjoy a lot of games. I'm not a niche channel. I'm not just COD, although that's kind of all I upload these days. You know, I'm not just the angry guy on Warzone, as a lot of TikTok kids like to think. And that was it. That was the Q&A. Um, sorry if I missed out your question. Um, if I cut out your question, it's probably because it was shit. <laughs> No, I'm joking. I just didn't have time to get through everyone's questions, so I had to cut out a few. I cut out some of the lesser interesting ones, or just ones that I just can maybe answer next time whenever I do another q and I don't know when it'll be, probably for some time yet, but like I was getting a lot of the same questions, and now I can just say, go look at my 5k q and a If you want to know the face of your these, 5k q and a If you want to know how my friends, 5k q and a Like I can just point people to this video now and just be like, leave me alone. Because <laughs> so I get a lot of the same questions over and over. It's quite frustrating. But no, I really wanted to do a Q&A. I haven't done one of these in ages since 
literally i was i'm literally 10 times the size i was when i last did one of these q a's that's crazy um i just want to thank you all for the growth um did i expect to be at 5k in 2021 no i expected to be at maybe a thousand or 1100 or something you know by now growing slowly like i gained 10 subs a day now which is crazy i used to gain one sub every few days the growth has been insane and honestly like it is so nice to actually have an audience for my content now honestly it is so nice to have an audience that actually cares about what i do and that is really genuinely interested in me so thank you all so much thank you for watching the videos like we recently hit monetization as well so just thank you all i can't honestly like i could repeat the sentence a thousand times over and it would still mean the same it wouldn't mean any less so thank you guys honestly so much here's hoping that i can get 10k maybe by the end of the year if i get back on my you know editing horse and i stop being such a lazy bastard but yeah i don't know uh, 10k by the end of the year maybe we got four and a half months left three and a half months left i don't know we've got some time left before the end of the year i think so yeah that's pretty much it um thank you all for watching i hope you got your questions answered if you didn't maybe ask something in the comments and i can try and respond to your comment and answer a question as long as it's not too deep or personal and stuff like that so i probably won't answer that in the comments <laughs> but yeah no i hope you all enjoyed and uh, i'll see you when i see you my daggies bye